A week away from spring training, Steve Phillips on the Tuesday stove. Good morning to you. Teams kind of putting the final touches on the rosters and the front offices, and we're learning that Carlos Beltran and Ian Kinsler will be special assistants to the general manager. I'm so curious, their value as former players, how would that have helped you? And good morning. Well, good morning. I, I love these sorts of decisions. So as a general manager, I was taught always make a list and put it at your desk of players that you've come across that could be future managers, future coaches, for future front office personnel to be able to know when their career is over, maybe check in with them, let them get away from the game a little bit, then consider bringing them back in. A guy like Ian Kinsler, 17th round draft pick, going to spend some time working with minor leaguers in the Rangers organization, has done some work with the Padres already, going back to where it started for him. But he's a guy that I think can relate to all of the minor leaguers, right? He wasn't a blue chip first round guy. He's a guy that had to earn his way and get there. He's a gritty, hard-nosed player and can send a message. And then like for Carlos Daltron, coming back into work for the Mets where he had a substantial Substantial part of his career there. I think it's a great thing for him. It's a great thing for the organization and an impact to continue to build the legacy of organizations. These aren't teams like the Dodgers and Yankees that have long histories of these storied franchises. And so I think connecting the players in the organization to some part of the past is really valuable. And Kinsler, a great representative of that with his buddy Chris Young going to Texas. He'll manage Team Israel and WBC. And Carlos Beltran, certainly a guy that's impacted the game in so many different ways. Going back to the match where I think he had a great run of success there. Two really good additions to the front office. And that's interesting that you identify that there's something special about them while they're still in the league and you kind of file it away. Steve, WBC almost here. We spoke about Carlos Correa not playing earlier, and we're learning that Luis Severino won't pitch either. Whose decision was that? What's behind it? Well, this is Brian Cashman's decision. Severino wanted to pitch for a team, Dominican Republic. But there are some rules that allow teams to make decisions about players that have had health histories. Severino spent time in the 60-day IL last year with a lat strain. He only made 19 starts last year. From 2019 through 2021, he made seven starts. So in the last four years, he's made 26 starts. He's so important to the Yankees' season this year. Brian Cashman said, I understand that he wants to play there. But with his health history, I just can't afford it. The Yankees just can't afford it. And so sometimes what happens is, as a general manager, you make decisions that are in the best interest of the organization that may not be necessarily in the best interest of the player, but you've got to do what you think is right. And you have to do what you think is right that doesn't make you lose your job. You let him pitch and he gets hurt. The owner says, well, what were you thinking? How do you answer that if you're Brian Cashman? So I think it's the right decision for the Yankees and for Brian Cashman. Well, we were looking at the rosters. The Yankees don't have many of their stars at all playing. I mean, I guess Nestor Cortez is the exception. And I was talking with Buck Showalter last week at that BBWA dinner. He said, my, my entire team's going. So it's interesting to see the two different perspectives. Their focus on the season as it should be. A season see that's going to look a whole lot different this year with rule changes. What should us fans be paying attention to the most? Well, I think the one I'm most intrigued by is how stolen bases are going to spike this year. I go back to the 80s, those Cardinals teams that they just ran. They would challenge it. They'd put pressure on the defense with the speed that they had. That's when Harold was playing back in the day. Uh, and I look at this and think, I want some speed back in it. So the extra four and a half inches, the runners leading off first base, and he's closer to second, is going to make a huge difference. Think how many plays and reviews we have on bang bang plays at second base for stolen bases. I just think that we're going to have a lot of guys stealing and the limitations on pitchers throwing over over there a big difference as well and Lord I think the thing that you and I learned the most about today more than anything else is that we actually have something in common with Hunter Green of the Cincinnati Reds where we can't throw 100 miles per hour we will both be a year older this year <laughs> just like Hunter Green no no I'm going the other way I'm done having oh. birthday Steve Phillips at the very latest you're the best